Her family abandoned her. A doctor adopted her. What he did next is hard to believe. Welcome to Viral Stories. Secrets, facts, and strange stories from around the world. If you find yourself amazed at what some of our fellow humans and animals can do, this is the place for you. This is a channel you're going to want to tell your friends about. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of our new uploads. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy Viral Stories. Angel's mother always knew that other children were scared of her daughter. She'd seen plenty of people stare at her. To protect her daughter, she and her husband, Danny, always kept Angel in the house to play with her brothers and cousins. But then one day, the inevitable happened. A four-year-old child approached Angel while the family was out. He yelled, Monster, at Angel. She just gave him a slap on the shoulder and said, Hello. I was very surprised by her response, says the person who was so proud of her four years ago. Angel was born in a public hospital in the Philippines. An ominous silence descended on the room after the birth of the child Angel. Black like ships. She was immediately taken to another hospital for medical treatment. The doctor explained that something was wrong, but it wasn't until five days later that he realized how bad things were. When I saw her for the first time, and I'd heard a lot about her, and now every moment that I look at her, it cuts me deep. A doctor diagnosed Angel with a brain hernia that occurs when the skull and the tissue do not close normally. Doctors don't know what causes it, but it's a common problem in Southeast Asia. These lesions can occur in the front or the back of the head, and depending on the severity, can include a small or a large amount of the patient's brain, causing damage and functional problems. When Angel was four months old, her parents, Ricardo Arona, paid around $5,500 for a surgery in the Philippines to ensure that the hernia was separated from the brain and was benign. This would help to prevent her brain spilling out and causing problems. The surgery was successful, and Angel seemed to develop without brain damage. But the hernia still covered most of her left eye and crushed the nose, making it difficult for her to play freely or sleep. Other tissues often held the bulge, moved it from side to side, but I could see a difficulty when she tried to play with both hands. At night, sometimes she couldn't sleep on her back because it blocked her breathing. Angel knew that other children were wary of her, but she stayed open and friendly. I said they were not in competition. Her family was from a fishing and agricultural town on the coast, paid lowly by the government with a basic wage, and they spent most of their time taking care of their children. They ran a small shop from their house, but they couldn't afford another $8,000 to have Angel's hernia removed. So they searched the internet for information about her condition to see what could be done. One day they found a story about a 12-year-old Filipino child who received a charity operation in the United States. They sent emails to the hospital where it had been carried out and they were referred them through Interpol to a group in Australia and New Zealander surgeons. People who need plastic surgery in the Asia Pacific region tend to stay at their work. One of the doctors who had been visiting the city from which he came, at 2 a.m. put them in contact with the foundation Cell del Fausto to see if they could take Angel to Australia for the procedure. The group agreed and paid to take Angel and her father to Australia and convinced the facial skull unit in the Women's and Children's Hospital of Avila to perform the procedure in September. When the couple arrived in August, staff from the foundation collected them from the airport and took them to a farm where there was a man who was currently taking care of 10 other children from nearby countries. He provided them with warm clothes and welcomed them to his house, which is affectionately known as the fat farm, because the children usually need food rich in calories for fattening them up and receiving medical treatment. The team scanned Angel's brain to verify that it had separated from the hernia during a previous operation in the Philippines. This made the four-hour operation simpler and less risky during which the team carefully cut the 200-gram lesion from Angel's face. It was full of abnormal brain tissue, and the liquid that was not needed was then used on her hip and to make sure a tragedy didn't take place. The remaining skin was sewn up, but a scar was left running from her forehead to her nose, crossing both nostrils. When Angel awoke, she asked where her eyes had gone. She said this as her eyes had been covered during the first three or four days. But she at last saw her face. Angel didn't express any surprise, 
but her behavior told a different story. When she got out of bed, there was nothing to obstruct her vision or breathing, so she could run faster and use both hands to play the piano instead of using one to hold her face. But that said, Angel would have to return to Australia, and later her nose could be reshaped as it had been pushed to one side due to the weight of the hernia. A reconstruction of the nasal area could take place when she was older, maybe when she was a teenager. After the operation, they returned Angel to the farm so that she could recover. They then flew home to reunite with the rest of the family, who were delighted to see them. Although Angel still looks different to the other children, the family themselves say that they're extremely grateful for the help she's received. They feel more optimistic about her future now. When she came home, they were so happy with her new face that they took her to their local church for the first time last week. They gave her a birthday party, invited more people than they used to, and celebrated it with the children of the neighborhood and other family members. Angel was so happy.